Hey guys, Vulture here with some Absolver content. Now today I want to talk about deck building. Specifically, building a deck that does a lot of different things. Kind of a Swiss Army Knife deck. Something you can use that's flexible and could deal with different situations you might encounter. So, something that gives you tools to deal with, say, charge attack spam, or something that gives you the tools to deal with light attack spam, or something that gives you the tools to deal with kind of like low attack spam. Not spam, but attacks. Or even, you know, um, Forsaken Absorb, uh, Forsaken Parry. So, to do this, to make a deck that can do lots of different things, I suggest looping to make it efficient. What I mean by looping is you have attack strings that lead back on themselves that you can do endlessly. So for example I have these three punches that I can chain out forever. As well as, you know, those attacks. So little loops. Uh, now I'll get into combat wise the positives and negatives of this later but for now I'm just kind of talking the logistics of building a deck so if you build these loops you kind of make a an efficient and kind of tight deck now what I mean by that is you have stances that are pretty much built with different ideas in mind so say this is my loop for pressure I can pressure as long as I want and I have access to these moves kind of endlessly within that loop and you know say I have a I need to get out of trouble stance and kind of do that to push someone off um, or like a kind of like an alt alt pressure kind of loop So by doing this, each stance almost becomes like its own room with its own label for what it's good for. So one stance, one room, the other stance, another, and so on. Um, this way you're not, when you're fighting someone, you have an idea what you want to beat. <clears throat> you want to beat like their jabs, so you... You know they're going to be throwing jabs from a certain stance, so say they're like in front of you like this, and they're just kind of hurting you with jabs, so... And you want to focus jabs. A focus on beating jabs. So you have the tools for that. And you're not exiting your stance going into, you know, the rest of your routine doing... that stuff, and becoming subject to... you know, jabs. So say like, a normal deck, you have... Something that leads into a bunch of slow attacks. You're not going to be able to... They're going to get their jabs off. And you're not going to be removing their tool of jab. So each stance kind of is focused on removing a tool. And just keeping focus on that one um, ability your opponent has and removing it. So ha keeping it to three attacks or four sometimes is a great way to focus on this. So let's let's give another example. So that's kinda like how you deal with jabs. This these three punches. So let's say you have someone that's given you a lot of trouble with charge attacks, so all of these not all of them, but for the most part, most of those attacks deal well with charge. You know, charge can be charge if you time it right. And then that beats charge as well. So you have two or three moves in that string that deal with charge. And then you can also. loops like that so every time you hit someone they pop the charge you know that's really common you can get them to stop that and actually have a real fight you know 
After a couple of those, they're not going to be wanting to uh, use charge attacks on you as often. Or it won't be as effective of a tool in their kit. They're not going to be reliably hitting you up with those charge attacks each time you, you hit them. Because you have this focused answer available that loops. Now, you know, there's, of course, exits to these loops that are appropriate, but that's the general idea. Loops to deal with problems. So, this is another loop that I have. This is kind of like the counter-pressure loop. So, say someone's hitting me with a lot of a lot of shit that's um, fast, you know, a lot of fast attacks. You, what I'll usually do is kind of turtle up, low cult, and then uh, hit him with the light attack here. Now, the Light attack leads into these kicks and punches, so I can do this to keep up pressure. It's also good against someone who's dodge spamming. Every time someone, there's a lot of players out there, each time they get hit, they'll dodge. So if I hit someone like with this, and I try to do follow up attacks and they dodge out, I'll switch here. I go, okay, I'm gonna remove your, your dodge tool. Force you to use some other tools that I can punish. Uh, what's another example? So, when you do these loops, um, you'll notice I only have one charge attack here. It's important to really nail down your important alternate attacks. So, I only have one charge attack, but because of this, but I can access it, this one charge attack, in other stances. So, I can access it on the second punch. Uh, on this one, the second punch on this one, and then the, oops, no, the first punch on this one, that's right. I also think I can access it on the third punch on that one. So I have my moves that lead in with this kick in mind, so with these loops I'm not only being efficient with what moves I want to do, I'm also being efficient with my moves available. So this, I only have one guard break. A lot of people will put a guard break or heavy attack on all their alternate attacks. And in my opinion, that's pretty inefficient and kind of limits what you're able to do. It's handy and has lots of advantages, but I think you can accomplish having a charge attack nearly on demand just by smart placement of what your attack sequences are. So, even though I only have one charge attack, I have access over many different stances. This one I don't, unfortunately, but I kind of don't need it. Uh, another thing to consider when you're making these loops is how to transition from one loop to another. So. If each of these is just a room with a label, so this is kind of like my just pressure room. I need a door out of this room into, say, like my alternate pressure room. So this is my alternate pressure room down here, which is, you know, kind of big slow kicks mix ups for parries. Um, so I want to get from here down there. So to get from here to there I go one, two, kick, and then I'm in my kick stance, in my like alternate stance. Which works pretty good. There's usually um someone's gonna get wise to your shit. This bullshit here pretty quick. Um so it's important when you build these loops to build in um ways to exit and enter rooms so since these are my kind of like offense stance this stance and this stance I want a lot of play that can bring me from between these two to mix up timing so these are kind of my medium and I can go between the stances kind of as at will so let me try this. Alright. 
haven't played yet, so I'm a little rusty, but the idea is to go from, to kind of swap between the two stances as I feel is necessary. So, with these loops, I kind of, I can access the two loops kind of on demand just from good alternate attack. Picking with the um, attack sequence where they end up in mind. So, for example, these three punches. After the second punch, I end up... I I'm sorry. After the second punch, I have access to this kick. And this kick brings me down to my, you know, back stance kicks. And then within this back stance, I have this sweep, which brings me back to the, the punches. So, through that... I have good access between the, the stances. Now... This is another example. So these two stances are more of kind of like my utility stances, not just base attack or pressure. They're kind of like, um, I'm being pressured, I need to break out, or there's something they're using that's giving me trouble that I need to deal with. So... There we go. So if I'm in this stance, this is kind of, like I said earlier, my counter-pressure stance. But I can go from that stance to kind of like a more guard-breaky stance. So those are the rooms between those. And then from the guard-break stance, I can go to like my alternate pressure stance or even my main pressure stance. So, I don't know if I'm explaining this well, but the idea is you just build these more or less enclosed rooms with doors between them as appropriate, and then as a fight goes on, you kind of get in the stance that's appropriate. So, this guy pressured you, you took some hits, you had to fall back, he's out of stamina. You're like, okay, I need to deal with what he's throwing at me. He's throwing charge attacks, so let's get in this stance and reliably deal with the uh, guard breaks, the uh, charge attacks, until he stops. And then when he stops, you know, we can, we can do other stuff, have an actual match. So yeah, that's the general gist of it. I don't want to go into too much more detail, summarize, just Focus on loops. Loops keep you efficient and focused, and then smart movement between your loops is key. Now, you don't have to have all loops. I don't have all loops. I think I only have basically one and two just full stance loops. The rest kind of loop in and out of each other. Oops. With uh, a couple alternate attacks at loops. So these these loop. That's a nice loop. Oh yeah, I did want to talk about this in combat and the negatives. So the negatives of this is you become super duper predictable. So, you know, it becomes very easy to read. Your opponent, if you're running, you know, three attacks here that lead into three attacks here that go to three and three, you know, per kind of like a normal deck, or you kind of rotate between you have like 9 or 12 different attacks that come out, which becomes hard to read and hard to focus on for your opponent. Very, It can be confusing. But if you only have a loop, a three-part loop, they're going to know what you're up to pretty quickly, and they're going to react. So it's important when doing this to keep that in mind. Keep in mind what your opponent knows you're going to do. So. For example, this is so when you do that, build in change ups. So, if this is this loop, I want to say I'm like pressuring a dodge spammer. They're just constantly back dodging and I want them to stop. And they just keep doing that. 
they're gonna get wise, and if they're like windfall, they're gonna try to jump over. So let's say they're windfall and they try to jump over. They punish that reaction. Or if they're turtling up, you know, light attacks on a turtle are not efficient. Keep that in mind. Or say you had you're fighting someone who's prone to dodging. Instead of keeping this pressure up, they're gonna dodge around you. Probably on the first hit, but <laughs> keep that in mind there. And then also you can abuse it. Abuse your opponent's expectations. So for example, this loop here. Highly telegraphed, very slow, parry bait. You can do that sort of a thing, or come from the other side as opposed to low. That's another way to do it. Another thing to do... Oh, let's talk about like... Kind of like stupid stuff for this deck. This is just specific to my deck, but... Um, something I've... is kind of a tip unrelated to deck building, but... Something I've noticed that's pretty effective when... You know, you're having like a heal off with your... With your opponent. You know, you got... You both backed off. It's kind of neutral aggression. You both get a heal down, and you're looking to re-engage. Um, those two moves together are really good initiations while under heal to remove their heal and keep yours. So, you know, this those under jabs hits twice, so often it'll screw up if they have a charge attack, and then you come out of it... With a charge attack yourself. Anyways, that's just a neat trick. Helpful for those heal fights. And also come out with that. Oh. So make this deck effective, especially against Forsaken. Is to use feints is to really abuse your opponent's expectations with your loops because they're going to be expecting stuff and they're going to want to punish it. But you can punish the punishes if the deck is built smartly and allows for it. So yeah, keep them decks efficient and lively and don't become a one-trick pony, guys. Don't just overload your deck with three charge attacks and just expect to win or just go <laughs> just go spin to win with um with the drunken bullshit. Oh yeah, uh this is probably gonna be part one. I'm gonna do a part two of like actually using this type of deck in a fight with me doing commentary over. So yeah, look for that in the future. So then, take care.